and Scott. We're in day four. I'm just loosening up a little bit because it's cold here today in New York. How we doing today? Where are you watching from? What's the weather like over there? We're, I'm waiting for spring to turn around and for the trees to come alive and the nature to come alive. One really cool thing, little side note, is that the nature where uh, we live in New York, it's so cool. I see foxes in the backyard and deer and hawks. It's fucking nuts. And then in Thailand, you would see like just monkeys and water buffalo and snakes. So I'll take these, uh, these animals over here. But uh, anyway, welcome to day four of the challenge, power kicking. All right, we're gonna be banging the heavy bag, slicing and dicing with some roundhouse kicks, low, middle, high. I'll be showing you a couple drills as well, so this way you can kind of develop a little bit more power in your legs. One of the main questions I usually get about how do I improve my kicking power is you just kick more. You just keep fucking kicking, man. Repetition is the mother of all skill, and to get better at anything, to get faster, to get more powerful. Generally speaking, you just need to keep practicing your kick, fine tune the technique. And obviously there's other ways that you can add onto that, but your technique and form is gonna make up like 90% of your power and uh, uh, speed more or less. And then the extra stuff like weightlifting and exercises uh, outside of Muay Thai, that will help add the 10%, but more often than not, I just recommend just kick the shit out of the bag often and kick other people, uh, not just on the streets and everything, obviously, like during sparring or fights. But uh, yeah, that's a quick little tip to get started. So anyway, I'm Sean Fagan. If you don't know me, pro Muay Thai fighter. We're on day four of the heavy bag challenge. We're doing workouts every single day. Uh, just kind of getting back into a good training flow because I've been bouncing back and forth with all these different life responsibilities that kind of have just come out of nowhere. And I'm finally settled back into some type of routine. I want to get back into a good training routine. So I wanted to kind of share this experience with you all, get a good momentum going. And so far, so good. You guys have been enjoying the workouts. It's been super fun to be doing this with you. And today we're going to be having even more fun and just throw some kicks. All right. So before we get warmed up and everything, remember, I always give away some free shit. So stick away, uh, stick around until like the middle or end where I spontaneously will give away a free shirt or shorts or something like that. Okay. Um, in addition to that, if you're watching this on YouTube or Facebook and you're not inside the Facebook group or inside the challenge arena, more or less, make sure you go to heavybagblueprint.com slash challenge because these videos will be taken down in a week from today. And if you want the streams and the workouts for the rest of your life, then you got to sign up. All right. So go do that if you'd like. Um, yeah, I think that's all I got for today. I've gone over some daily tips recently about like motivation about time mastery and about something else. I don't remember. Again, I just get hit in the head too much and smoke too much. So uh, memory is going. We're going to get warmed up. We're going to hit the heavy bag. And I need to take off my wedding ring so I don't break my finger. Funny story, my wedding ring is actually on my middle finger because it was sized wrong and I have yet to change it. So I've been wearing my wedding ring on my middle finger for the past three plus years. Cool, right? Anyway, you guys ready? Who, who's here? We got Alex Rojas from Texas, working out from Peru. Alexis, nice and hot, kind of jealous. Sean Ray, you're back at it up in Maine. I love Maine, man. Uh, we've been to Portland and uh, like the surrounding area quite a bit. I want to go to Acadia National Park one year because it's just beautiful up there. I mean, it's one of my uh, favorite places inside the U.S. that I've traveled to so far. Awesome food. Lobster. Fuck yeah. Seafood, clam chowder. You know what's up. Sasha, welcome back, my man. Congrats on winning this t-shirt yesterday. Uh, maybe giving it to your girlfriend. Who knows? We'll have to wait and find out. But uh, let me know how that goes, man. And uh, got some Poland. Got Vancouver. What's up, Ruthie? What's up, Sarah from Colorado? Colorado's another one of my favorite places in the U.S. Mario from Canada. I love Canada too. All right. So you guys ready to get started? Let's fucking do it. Let's get warmed up. Let me point this down a little bit. All right. Okay. You might hear some like drilling and stuff in the background because my contractor is working on our Airbnb downstairs so you can come train and stay with me. 
Ready? Let's do some jumping jacks. Just nice and easy, getting the body moving. Always just trying to get in touch with the breath and the body. Once you get started with any type of workout, stay nice and light on your feet, trying to relax your shoulders. Boom. Let's crisscross our feet and crisscross our arms. Go into cross jacks. I like my outfit today. I'm all red today. I was all blue yesterday. Got to look good, feel good, train good. Let's go back to jumping jacks. Do another minute or two of these combined exercises just so we can get the heart rate up a little bit. The body move in. Back to cross jacks. Staying nice and light. Soft bend in the knees. And here we go back up to the jumping jacks. One more time each. Oh yeah. Thanks for joining in again. If you're doing this workout with me, you're a badass. Appreciate you being here. Helps motivate me. Hopefully it helps motivate you. Back to cross jacks. Thinking about doing private sessions online too. All right, let's get into a fight stance. All right, just kind of hop back and forth. Hands are up, chin is tucked. Staying nice and light on your feet. Let's switch our feet back and forth now. Uh, like a Sanchai switch, Ali shuffle type of thing. Then go into your other stance and bounce back and forth. So now I'm southpaw, right? Bouncing back and forth, my hands are up. Back to switching. Breathing, hands are up. Staying relaxed. Back to orthodox or whatever stance you started in. All right. All right. Let's do some a little bit faster switches. Just a little bit faster, nothing too crazy. And let's do some alternating teeps now. It's nice and slow. Let's get the legs loose. Trying to focus on technique while also loosening up that body. All right, let's do alternating knees now. Just kind of popping the knee a little bit, focusing on your hand position. You can either come up on the balls of your foot, boom, 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 or you can stay flat-footed. It's up to you. All right, let's just do some torso rotation side to side. Let's reach up, interlock your fingers. Nice deep stretch. You can come up on your tippy toes. You can bend back a little bit. Let's twist over to the right. Using your hand to like kind of pull and twist a little bit farther. Other direction, catching your breath. Let's do some shoulder shrugs backwards. I don't know about you, but my shoulders are sore. My abs are sore. My legs are all right. I have a feeling after today, they might be uh, feeling the same way as the rest of my body. Ah, big arm circles backwards. Arm circles forwards. What we got going on? What's up, Deb? Doing shadow boxing only. Awesome job. You're sore as well. That means you're working hard. Good. Open up your arms. Don't be typing too much during the workout though. That means you're not doing the workout, right? Comment in between rounds. When I'm asking for your questions and input and all that kind of stuff, 
I love the engagement and everything, but make sure you're doing the workout too, right? <laughs> All the people sitting down right now are like, oh shit, Sean's watching me. All right, let's uh, bring the leg up, do some circles. I love this little warm up exercise. I do this every morning because I feel like it just loosens up my hip joint, helps with my balance. Other direction. And just control of your, your legs and everything as well. Our other leg, bring it around. Other direction. Just come down and touch the toes. If you need to bend your knees a little bit, you can do that. Let me try to get it in frame here. Put your hands on your shin, just straighten your back a little bit. Catch your breath and then fall back forward. Stretching those hands, strings out. Let's heel toe the feet out a little bit. Come sit down to a squat. And kind of push side to side with your knees. Use your elbows to push your knees out. Boom. By the way, if you're loving these workouts, be sure to share with your friends and training partners, man. Because uh, the more people who do these type of things, it's just, it's just good for the sport, you know? More people are improving, getting better. You can make some circles with the knees too. especially if people are training at home, these workouts are super important. Like I said in the past, I think maybe yesterday, it's really important to learn how to train by yourself because even as a professional fighter, especially as a professional fighter, you end up training a lot more by yourself than you think you would. All right, warmed up, ready to go. Let's grab some gloves. If you got any questions before we get started, we could do that. But otherwise, let's get into this shit, okay? Let me grab some water. So one thing I was thinking about doing, well, I have a couple ideas. Let me tell you. So one thing I was thinking about doing was doing online private uh, lessons. I do some with Ty Lopez. He's like this famous uh, entrepreneur. You probably might have seen one of his early YouTube ads about him being in a garage, here in my garage, I have a Lamborghini. But what's more valuable than a Lamborghini? Knowledge. And that's Ty Lopez. I do privates with him and they're fun, you know? I enjoy them. I enjoy being on video and teaching people Muay Thai. So if you're interested in doing uh, private lessons online, uh, I am not cheap, just put it out there. I value my time very much. But if you're interested in doing an hour session, 90 minute session, whatever it may be, just drop an emoji, drop a comment. Let me know if you guys be interested. I'll make sure to create a page on MuayThaiGuy.com so this way you can book sessions with me if you'd like to. And we're also going to be creating like stay and train packages because we're building this Airbnb in our basement. And so you can come literally stay at my house well, at my Airbnb that's inside my house, separate entryway, separate living space, all that kind of stuff. And then in this room right here and do some uh, Muay Thai training with me. And you could also add on to the package. I can give you like a tour of uh, downtown New Pauls of a couple hikes in the area. We can go to Moseri Muay Thai in uh, Kingston, which is about a 20 minute drive from here. And uh, just make sure you have a good time. So if you'd be interested in either of those, whether it's like the stay and train with me uh, for like a long weekend or whatever it may be, or private sessions online, let me know. And if there's enough interest in both of those, I'll make it happen, all right? I like to make things happen. Oh, look at that. Lighting is good right now. Yeah, baby. Mm. <laughs> Definitely gonna keep an eye on the Airbnb Muay Thai stay and train. Hell yeah. I have a feeling that's going to be a lot of fun and it's going to be popular because uh, I love Muay Thai. I love being a host. That's why we do these Muay Thai vacations in Costa Rica, Greece, Thailand, and I love my hometown. And so I'm going to make sure you have a great time, not just with your Muay Thai training, but also with new pulse and just your overall stay and everything. So, all right, ready to go. Round number one. Let's do this. Scott, what's the first combo? Jab, roundhouse. All right. Gonna loosen up again, start slow, and then we're gonna get into it. Okay, let's go. 
Oh yeah, this bag, it keeps settling every day and I feel it getting harder and harder. It kind of feels nice. Oh, all right, that's not the combo. The combo is jab, roundhouse. And then back. This is nice and easy, loosening up, okay? I'm gonna give a little bit less technical advice today and just let you kind of drill. And so this way you can either try to keep up with me. Uh, obviously I'll still be giving some pointers here and there, but uh, for the most part, we're just focused on really trying to turn that hip over, rotate your shoulder through, okay? Come up on the ball of your feet while you throw, thrust that hip, hump the air, right? And really try to land with your shin on the bag and bring it back in a good fighting stance, okay? Ready? Let's fucking do this. Jab, roundhouse, and back. Can add a check to it, of course. At the end, jab, roundhouse, and back. And back. I'll try not to yell so loud because I know I have the mic on my shirt. I'm really just trying to kick through the bag, right? I'm not stopping my kick at the bag. If my kick, if the bag wasn't there, I should be doing like a 360 because I should be kicking through the bag, right? Sticking that jab out, not getting lazy with the jab. Make sure your hands are up. The jab's going to help set up that roundhouse, so make sure that you're doing it properly. Let's do 10 more. Ready? One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Five more. Make these count. Six. Seven, eight, stay relaxed, nice and loose, nine, last one, ten, all right, next one, Liz looking fine, mighty fine, lunge to roundhouse, okay, so now we're going to add a little bit of a drill slash exercise. So this can help you really develop power, explosive power in your legs for when you're throwing the roundhouse. So we're gonna throw your rear roundhouse, okay? You're gonna be in a lunge. Your hands are gonna be up because you're a fucking Muay Thai fighter. Your hands aren't gonna be down here like this, okay? Your hands are up, you're gonna do a lunge. Then as you come up, you're gonna explode up into the kick. So I'm gonna lunge, kick, and then back. And then lunge, kick, and back. It's gonna challenge your balance. It's gonna challenge your coordination. So uh, good luck. Just know that it's not easy. And so it takes time to drill. I might not make it even look that easy uh, cause I'm still getting used to it. But this is a good little drill to really focus on the explosion up off the ground. Get those fast twitch muscle fibers really moving. So let's do, let's do, uh, we'll do 10 of these, okay? That sounds good. So getting your fight stance, a little bit of a wider stance, obviously, because you're going to be lunging. So lunge, <coughs> kick, and then back. That's one. Let's go into two. Lunge, <coughs> kick, and back. Really trying to use that upward momentum as you're coming up from the lunge, to drive into the kick. Lunge, <coughs> kick. That's three. Let's do four. Lunge, <coughs> kick. If you want to add a, if you want to do a jumping kick, you can do a jumping kick too as you're coming up. A little bit more advanced, obviously. <coughs> a little bit more fun though. That was five. Let's do five more. <coughs> Six. Sorry, I said I was, uh, wasn't going to yell so loud, and I feel like I'm yelling as loud as humanly possible. Ready? <coughs> It doesn't feel as powerful if I don't yell though. <clears throat> That's seven. Three more. <clears throat> Eight. <clears throat> Nine. 
nine, one more. <clears throat> 10, all right, that was fun. Now we're doing jab, switch kick, okay? Make the switch nice and quick. Don't jump up and down, right? Your heads and your eyes should be the, the same level when you switch, okay? So I'm gonna throw a jab. I can leave it out here as like a guard, switch, kick, and come back into my stance, okay? Ready, do it nice and slow, get it down first, ready? Let's go. Jab, switch, and then back. Jab, switch, kick, and back. Resetting into a good fight stance. Keep on drilling. The switch kick is tough. I'm still figuring this shit out too, and I've been doing this for a while. There's always room for improvement, all right? Make sure you're really pivoting this foot too so it helps open up your hip, the foot that's on the ground. And really turn this shoulder. A lot of people will end up kicking and they'll keep their shoulder back. Make sure you're rotating this through. Let's do 10 more. One. Two. Three. Relax, breathe, chin tuck, hands up. Four. Five, six, seven, three more. Make sure you're punching eye level. Make sure you're landing with your shin when you kick. Last two. And last one. Oh, the more I got fucked up. One more. I was so excited. I got ahead of myself. Now we're doing lunge roundhouse on the other side. Okay, so now you're obviously switching your legs. Now you should be kicking with your opposite leg. Okay, let's do 10, ten of these bitches. Ready? So let me try to get a right angle so I don't kick the wall. Let's go. So lunge. Knee and back. Is the propane here, Liz? We don't have any propane. <coughs> okay. Because we don't, our heat, I was just telling Scott this, our heat is electric. <coughs> but our cooking and our laundry, propane, so we haven't been able to cook or use laundry. Anyway, that was two. You don't give a shit about that, do you? No, you don't. Ready? Let's go. Three, seven more. Seven. I lost count already. I think six more. Five more. Three more. Last two. Last one. All right. Is that a break? Take a quick little break. The propane guy is here, I think. So much stuff is happening right now. I hear like drill going downstairs. Liz answered the front door. All right. How we doing, folks? You hanging in with me? Still feel like I have good energy. Feel a little bit lower energy today. I don't know if it's the weather. Shut up, Fudge. Do good job. What's up? 
Lunge Roundhouse Elite Training. Yeah, it's fun, right? Definitely uh, helps you add some more drive off, off the ground, pushing through those legs and shit, right? Sean, you are a modern uh, Kratos. Let's go. I get that comparison often. I appreciate that. Damn, my technique feels so much better than yesterday. Some days you feel fucking good. Other days you feel like shit. One little tip I usually give people is that like a lot of times when, especially you're training like daily in Thailand or daily in the U.S. or whatever, say you train six days a week, you'd be lucky if you feel good two of those days, right? Usually, at least for me personally and for most of the fighters I've chatted with, most days you kind of feel like shit, but you show up anyway and you put in the work anyway. Then the days that you feel good, man, you feel like you're in a fucking matrix. Can't be touched. Driving all the power into all your kicks and strikes. You're just fluid as hell. Same goes with like smoking weed. Sometimes I'll smoke weed before I spar. And yo, I am in the matrix. You can't touch me. Then other days I'll smoke before training. And I'm moving to molasses. I can't fucking do anything. It's very hit or miss. I live dangerously, live an exciting life. <laughs> Any questions before we get started? How did you hang your bag? I put mine up, shakes the entire house. It shakes a little bit of this wall, at least. So we have quick little, we have three two by fours and one two by six. The two by six is at the top. That's like the main anchor. They're drilled into uh, studs and bolted in and then we bolt in the heavy bag mount in the middle and that seemed to work pretty well he like hung up on me when i'm trying to tell him that he's not here and i don't know what to do huh but like they're not here and he's like well i'm at the end of old mill and i was trying to say do you see a blue monster and he hung up i i thought i one second folks I thought I heard someone backing up or some shit. It was the oh, it was? So, like, I don't see him at all. So, I don't know what I'm supposed to do if they're going to hang up on me. Call him back. Rude. I'll step out in my Muay Thai stuff. Like, yo, propane man. Like Give me some fucking propane, bro, so I can cook my meat. <laughs> Give him shit. Liz is about to be on something she's about to what is it go off the chain <laughs> all right did he bring propane and propane based accessories i don't fucking know we we have we're supposed to have we're changing propane people you guys don't care but uh we're changing propane people it's been a pain in the fucking ass let's just tell you that much okay I will uh, answer questions in between rounds and at the end. I will I see some questions there and I will answer them. But let's get into the next round, eh? So that was a longer break than expected. What we got, Scott? Cross roundhouse. Let's go. So as you throw the cross, you can either leave it out here. Okay, we did this combination yesterday. You can leave it out here and kick. You can reset and kick, or you can kind of just do a quick little pump and then reset and kick, okay? It's up to you. Ready? Let's go. Really just trying to drive that kick through, right? Making sure my hip is reset. And somewhat of my shoulder too. You don't have to completely reset to kick, right? I can just kind of come right back here and then drive in. This with behind the scenes <coughs> for the gram. <coughs> Always coming back into a fight stance. Always ready to attack. <coughs> Always ready to defend. <coughs> Let's do five more. <coughs> That's one. <coughs> Two, 
three, four. You can mix up the levels, by the way. Five. All right. What we got next? Lunge to roundhouse. Oh, shit. I did a lot of these, huh? All right. Let's do 10 lunge to roundhouses. Ready? Let's go. So lunge, roundhouse, and back. That's one. Breathe in. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Three more. Eight. Nine. Last one. Ten. Quick little uh, tip too. Next, we're doing cross switch kick. If you're shadow boxing the roundhouse, there's three ways to do it. You can roundhouse and then reset, which is the recommended way. You can roundhouse and 180. Typically, I don't recommend that. Super Bond does it. A lot of great fighters do it, but I like to build the habit of always being able to have my opponent in front of me. Or you throw a full 360 and you reset. That will help with kicking through the bag and everything. Okay. But I would recommend kicking and then retracting so this way you can defend. Cross switch kick is next. Ready? Let's go. So extend the cross, right? Your body's already rotated. Then you're going to switch and then drive through and then reset into a fight stance. Ready? Let's go. And I know I keep saying I'm not going to yell or grunt as loud, but it's too much of a habit now. So sorry if I'm breaking your ears if you're listening to on headphones. Let's do 10 more. That's two. Keep your chin tucked. Three. Four. Your arms are nice and tight into your body. They're not out when you're kicking. Five. Six. Seven, eight, adding some defense, nine, last one, ten. All right. Lunch to roundhouse on the other side, I'm guessing. Let's go. You can catch your breath while you're kicking. Ready? Lunge to knee or kick. Sorry, that's one. Doing ten. Two, three, four, feels good, five, six, seven, three more, eight, Nine. Ten. All right. Is that the round, Scott? I fucking hope so. <laughs> Take a little break. Grab some water. Got questions. I got answers. We got to figure out our lunch today on Dash Pass, Liz. Door Dash. We have Dash Pass. What is the weight of the heavy bag? Say like 200 pounds, give or take. I haven't weighed it, but I would guess 200 pounds. Maybe a second camera. Man, you have no idea how hard and complicated that would be 
to set that shit up with a live stream. Um, I could do it if I filmed the course. Doing the, this live uh, is complicated enough with one camera. Trust me. Trust me. But if I come out with the heavy bag blueprint 3.0 sometime in the future, maybe a camera from the top would be kind of cool. Never thought about that. That's weird. Yeah. I am nearly 50 and very small. Would Thai boxing be suitable for you? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Do it. Do it, Brian. You don't, there's your confirmation. Do it, bro. Do it. We've had people in their 40s, 50s, 60s start Muay Thai and even have their first fight after they started in the 40s or 50s, right? And so uh, it's fun. It gets you up. It teaches you a skill. Um, it gets you in good shape. It helps uh, just make you feel good. You get to hit shit, man. Like releasing, you know? And uh, there's something about just hitting stuff that's, uh, I'm a very, I'm like kind of pacifist, to be honest. I'm not like a violent person at all. But uh, when I fight, obviously I am. Or when I hit the heavy bag, I am. But yin yang, you know? That's what it's all about. What belts did you win? Name of the championship belts. That's the WKA North American Championship. That's the take on promotion title. That one, I won with a broken arm. Uh, I broke in the first round, or I shouldn't say I broke it. My opponent broke my arm in the first round with a kick that I blocked. I had to get surgery. I have metal plates and a rod in my arm, and it took me over a year to recover from that shit. So that was not fun. So that's a well earned belt. Even if I didn't win, I would still felt very proud that I finished the fight. But the fact that I won and got a nice, pretty belt definitely helped. This belt I won uh, defending my title. The, I have uh, another belt upstairs what, that I won at Madison Square Garden, which is this fight photo. Oh, this fight photo right here is my fight at Madison Square Garden. So, yeah, those are my three belts. Does the smoking affect your reflexes and awareness? Like I said, man, sometimes smoking helps. Like some, like I remember specifically one sparring match I had, uh, or sparring session, I should say. And dude, no one could touch me. I was so high too. I, I was just like, I literally was dodging all the kicks. I was blocking everything. I was landing at will. And uh, it was against guys who usually like me, me and them, my training partner, Chris Mysteri, my old, uh, Coach JJ Russo, usually we like we're pretty even and we're just hitting each other. But that day, I was just on something, man. Uh, on weed, I guess you could say. But then other days I'll smoke and I will be so sluggish and slow. So maybe it depends on the strand, maybe it depends on my mood. There's probably a lot of factors that go into it. I don't condone this by any way or means. This is just what I do personally. Uh, I enjoy it, it makes things a little bit more fun for me. And I'm very functional. Uh, high. I'm high right now. And uh, I'm usually high when I'm on camera. And so there's a little behind the scenes type of thing too. But uh, it affects everyone differently. Use it at your own discretion. I'm not a doctor or anything. But uh, yeah, that's my little tidbit. I wrote a, a post called a Muay Thai stoner years ago. And uh, it's the most visited blog post on the Muay Thai guy website. And uh, I've wrote some really good, like, Muay Thai-related posts, but write anything about marijuana and Muay Thai, and uh, I guess it's a controversial subject. So uh, there you go. Another thing, if you stay and train with me, you can also do an add-on smoke weed with the Muay Thai guy. There you go. All-inclusive. BYOW. Bring your own weed, though. I'm just playing. <laughs> All right, you guys ready? We're getting into round number three, and then I'll finish uh, answering any questions, okay? Let's go. Low, middle, high kick. Now, if you don't have a low kick bag, a banana bag, then obviously just middle, high kick. But I want to attack low, reset, attack middle, reset, attack high, reset. I might have to stretch out a little bit more to really get those high kicks. Or you can do it kind of back to back to back where it's low, middle, high. All right, I'm probably gonna do that with a mixture of uh, resetting and throwing it. 
Um, Scott, do you know if this is uh, just the right roundhouse, just the rear roundhouse right now, and then I'm going to be doing my other side next? I think that's, I think that's what I got planned. <laughs> <laughs> that's great all right ready low middle high i didn't see what scott said so let's just fucking do the rear roundhouse ready <coughs> low <coughs> middle <coughs> high now i can do a quick <coughs> and then i reset always reset always get back into a fight stance try not to finish the kick off balance Oh, my mic. Ah, too much power. Too much fucking power, Sean. Keep going. Just because I'm fixing my mic doesn't mean you stop. Low, middle, high kick. Did the propane guy come? Okay. Okay, back to low, middle, high. You guys still going, right? If you can't do high kicks, do yoga. Which we're going to be doing a bonus challenge live on Saturday. Make sure you sign up at heavybagblueprint.com slash challenge so you know the time. We're still figuring that out. <laughs> but Liz will be leading a Muay Thai for yo a yoga for Muay Thai. Muay Thai for yoga, right? I should make that course. <laughs> Let's do three more. <laughs> Last two. <laughs> Last one. All right, what we got next? Double roundhouse, sweet. So, when you throw the double roundhouse, it can be a little tricky when you first start doing it. It could be even trickier explaining it when you're out of breath. Just give me a second. <laughs> so I'm gonna throw the roundhouse, and you can rotate all the way for your first roundhouse. And after you rotate completely with your first roundhouse, you're still gonna keep your body kind of square and rotated. And then as you reset here, my shoulder is still locked and then I'm gonna kick again. It's hard to explain doing it slow, so I'll do it a little bit quicker, but I'm gonna kick and kick. So my body is still kind of sideways and rotated when I do the double kick. You can do a, a quick kick and then turn if you want to as well, but I like trying to land the first kick and then doubling up with the second kick just as powerfully. Okay, so let's try a double roundhouse. Ready? Let's go. Make sure you're up on the ball of your foot too. <coughs> Start slow, get a feel for it. <coughs> you can change levels with this as well. You can go low and then high. <coughs> You can go body and then low. Any kind of double roundhouse you want. Do double low kick. Work on that shin. Conditioning. People ask me, how do you condition your shins? You kick the bag just like this every day. Nothing fancy. You just keep kicking things. And who would think you get better at kicking? And your body adapts to it. Your bones adapt to it. Make sure your back is nice and hard, though. Let's do three more. You could also make them a little bit faster than I am. I'm trying to. Really just focus on technique and a little bit of power. If you want to do speed, you can do speed too. <coughs> or you can do more power based. <coughs> Last one. <coughs> All right. 
What we got, Scott? Low, middle, high kick on the opposite side. You ready? Let's go. So you can either do a switch kick and start it. So if you start with a switch kick, you switch, boom, and then you go straight into it from there. Or you can go in your opposite stance. For me, it's southpaw. And I'm going to just throw my rear roundhouse. I like my rear roundhouse a lot more than my switch kick. And I also fight uh, southpaw sometimes. So I like to throw my left roundhouse as a rear roundhouse. If you're a righty and you're comfortable fighting righty, then focus on doing the switch kick. Okay? Ready? Let's go. Low, middle, high. I also feel a little bit more flexible in my left hip, so I have better head kicks with my left. Now the head kick, sometimes you might land with your foot as opposed to your shin just because of the, the distance of a head kick. It's all good. It might hurt your foot, but it's going to hurt their face too. I've been kicked with both a shin and a foot. I'll tell you, shin definitely hurts more, but foot still, still really hurts. Okay, ready? Let's go. Obviously, try to land with your shin. Sometimes it's difficult with the high kicks. Or I could focus more on just the power and do low, then middle, then high. Let's do five more. If you're doing shadow boxing, you're kind of coming back and resetting. So you want to kick, reset, kick, reset, and then kick and reset. It might take a little bit of effort, to be honest. Last two. And last one. All right. Double roundhouse on the left, I'm guessing. Double switch kick, okay? So again, you can either switch and come into the kick and do a double there, which looks like this. Then I reset one more time. And then reset. Or I can be in my opposite stance and double up with my left, which is what I'm going to do. Or right, fuck it, I'll do switch kick this time. Okay, ready? Double switch kick. <coughs> then I get back into my stance, right? <coughs> and then I'm back. <coughs> if you're doing this shadowing, you want to kick and then rotate through. So I switch, I kick, and then I rotate through. So it's a little bit more of like a snap karate type of kick. So it's hard to replicate it without some type of uh, feedback resistance like the bag. Five more. Four more. Last three. Last two. Last one. All right. Time. Good job. Grab some water. I'll answer some questions. And we will finish up with some abs. A light ab workout today. My abs are sore. I don't care what you say. We're doing a light ab workout today. This way we can finish strong tomorrow. Are there any spar bars, brands of spar bars you recommend? Spar bar, the brand, probably. Um, I haven't really used any of it though, so I can't personally recommend it. But um, I was looking to get one. You know what? Fuck. Maybe I'll get one and put it like, oh, I'm pointing at the screen. Right. There. Uh, there. We'll see. But, uh, or a speed bag or something. But spar bar, the actual, uh, Brand might be a good option, but I, I don't know, to be honest. What's better for Muay Thai, cold or hot water training? 
training. Depends what you uh, qualify as better or what you define better as. Um, I like it in the heat better because uh, I loosen up quicker. Feels good to sweat. And uh, it's just a lot. I don't know, it's like outdoor training and stuff as well, especially in Thailand. It's a lot of open air studios and gyms. Cold weather training makes me feel like I'm rocky and rocky four, especially if it's like in the snow and shit. And it kind of feels good sometimes. So I wear layers and hoodies. Uh, definitely takes longer to warm up and shit though. I would say hot weather is better because you also sweat more. I guess you're used to like uh, what it feels like in a fight because in a fight you get hot. You get very hot and sweaty. It's a heavy bag dent, like a badge of honor in Thailand. Yeah, kind of. I mean, the, you should be like, uh, I mean, it kind of depends on the bag and everything as well. I like to make sure that if my one dent is in my bag, then I twist it around and dent in the other bag so it kind of like evens out. But um, yeah, especially if you're doing skip knees and you, you keep rotating on and kicking the same exact spot, then uh, yeah, it's definitely, uh, it's definitely common in Thailand. You'll see a lot of bags just with those dents in the middle from knees and kicks and that kind of stuff. Does MMA gyms in Thailand sponsor professional fighters sign with any promotion? Please reply. <laughs> Let me give you a quick spiel about sponsorships in Thailand. They're not easy to get. You have to go there and prove yourself. So you have to pay to play. Like You have to go there, show that you're actually willing to do this shit, and then they'll think about sponsoring you. A lot of people ask, like, how do you get sponsored before you go? It, you better have a big social media following. You better have something to offer them. They're not just going to sponsor you because you're a good fighter. It's not like that, right? Um, and you got to kind of prove that you're a good fighter by being able to market yourself and everything as well. It's a new world, man. You know, if you, especially if you want to get paid, you got to learn how to actually promote yourself as a brand and be able to uh, sell tickets, be able to put butts in the seats more or less. So, uh, it is hard to get a sponsorship. The reason I was able to get sponsorships because I had value to give. I, I was able to give the gym exposure. I was able to get people to come to the gym and pay. And so you got to give them something in return at the very least. And then also just show up and put in the work, tell them that you're a pro fighter. You want to be a sponsor fighter. You're going to show them that. And then hopefully they, uh, will we'll see that you're worth it. But, uh, don't have false hopes about being able to get sponsorships unless you're actually there. Just keeping it real. You can call this keeping it real with Sean Fagan. That's the way I do. Where did you get your Prajads? Uh, the Prajads are the, what the fuck, the armbands, right? Um, I got mine made by Custom Moncons um, a while back. I don't really wear Prajads. I don't really wear anklets. I like to fight naked, more or less, just shorts. Um, but there's plenty of places online that you can you can get them. Awkward potato. That's a good handle. How did you come back from your injury again, fighting the ring? How many years did it take? It took me about a year to like be able to fully train again and start sparring, but I still felt pain in my arm and it took about 18 months in total before I started competing again. It was very difficult. Um, I was in a dark place for a little while, but uh, I just kept my eye on my vision, stayed really clear with my vision and knew that I would eventually be back and uh, try to stay busy with sharpening my mind, building my business on the side and everything. Tilly, Tilly, come here. Uh, any tips? Read. Read a lot of books. Not just about recovery and stuff, just read. Will your program promo start tomorrow? Yes. The program promo will start tomorrow. I was thinking about studying, uh, starting it early, uh, but to be honest, I still have some things I need to get in place before uh, I run the promo. But uh, tomorrow, the Heavy Bag Blueprint 2.0 will be uh, re-released uh, more or less for a 25% discount, and you get a free pair of boxing gloves with that and a few extra bonuses uh, that you'll see. So it's a pretty good deal. It has 87 five-star reviews uh, on my knockmornation.com slash shop. I get really good responses from it. Uh, I'm very proud of the way that the course came out, and I'm looking forward to 
just getting more feedback and hearing what people think of the course and how I can continue making it better. Cause maybe I'll make a, a newer version uh, later, maybe this year or next year, but uh, I'm not in a rush to do that. So yeah, promo will start tomorrow. Appreciate that. If you were to meet the people who used to bully you in school, how did you think they would react and how would you react? It's funny because I've actually gone back to like high school reunions and like this kind of stuff. And it's like, they forget that they were ever assholes, you know, and they think I'm the coolest guy. And, uh, they like come up to me like this, but, Oh man, I saw you fighting in Thailand, bro. That's so cool. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, man, I'm like never talked to you. And, uh, now we're best friends, huh? It's, uh, it's strange. It's very strange, but I, I thank everybody in every part of my journey because, uh, in one form or another, they helped me grow as a human and the bullies helped kind of, kind of plant some insecurity in my head, to be honest, that made me feel like I needed to prove something to myself in order to feel like I could defend myself and stand up for myself. So thanks to the bullies, I was able to get into Muay Thai more or less. And uh, that's led me to doing this live session with you and answering this question, Alberto. Good question. Good question. I've been doing podcasts recently, uh, interviews. People have been asking me for interviews and answering these questions really helped me kind of articulate my thoughts because usually I don't talk about this kind of stuff. I'm very introverted, actually. It's kind of weird. What's the deal with these carbon fit Muay Thai shorts? What are they? Carbon fit Muay Thai shorts. Do I sell carbon fit Muay Thai shorts? Um, I don't think I do. Do I? I don't fucking know, man. I, I don't know how to answer that question. Because I don't know what they are either. I'm sorry. <laughs> I said I would have answers to all your questions, but not that one. Sorry. Daniel, when turning for kicks on the balls of my feet, my big toe seems to stick to the mat sometimes and get forced to the inside. Is there a way against that? Um, some of my answers are going to feel really simple, simplistic, but like you just got to keep practicing it and bringing intention to it. Um, that's not like a common thing that I'm aware of. I haven't been asked a question like that before. So I think it's just a matter of, really bring a lot of attention to it, really kind of over-exaggerating the, the pivot and the turn. And uh, maybe uh, maybe shaving off the skin of your big toe. I don't know. That's my last piece of advice. <laughs> don't take that piece of advice, by the way. Take everything I say with a grain of salt. Lately, I've been turning my head when I throw my roundhouse like Rod Tang. I've noticed a snappier impact as I twist my body. Tips on throwing harder kicks. Um, yeah, you can definitely rotate your, your head because that kind of leads your body into rotating as well. Uh, I like to still keep my eyes on my opponent, though. I don't like to ever take my eyes off my opponent. Other tips for powerful kicks is like, honestly, when it comes to power, right? Like power is great and everything, and you can do some serious damage with some kicks. But accuracy and timing are going to be a lot more important. And so really focusing on getting your kick up quickly and not uh, not like telegraphing it, that's the word I'm looking for, and trying to just get it into your opponent as quickly as possible, those are gonna be more dangerous and uh, high scoring than the power kicks. The so power kicks, especially when you get to a certain level, everyone has hard kicks, you know? It's just a matter of who can land the kicks better. And usually the person who lands the kicks better has better setups, has better defense because they're able to block kicks and counter kicks and they have better timing and distancing. And so power is sexy, right? Like, oh, I want power kicks to KO my opponent and everything. And yes, it's important to be drilling power, really learning the technique, rotating your hips and uh, driving through the bag. Uh, but ultimately try to focus on like speed, try not to telegraph your, your kicks at all and also be able to retract your kick quick enough to uh, avoid it from being caught and also being able to defend. But essentially the best way to get more powerful kicks is just, just to keep kicking. Um, a lot of the answers to these questions will be like that. Like, how do I get better cardio? You run more. How do you get better Muay Thai? You train Muay Thai more. How do you get more powerful kicks? You kick more. Um, that is just what I've been taught this entire time. There are ways to kind of optimize it uh, like I said, weightlifting and that kind of stuff, but ultimately technique and repetition above all. And then uh, eventually you'll start to get the hang of it. You start to pick up some things that work and what don't work. 
and then kind of take it from there. So uh, good questions, everyone. How long do your gloves last? I mean, until they're so beaten up, you start feeling you should get new ones. These gloves are relatively new. I've gotten, uh, I got these gloves, by the way. I'm going to be uh, giving a pair of these away as long as well as my double strap gloves at the end of the week. So uh, if you're not signed up for the challenge, you can't win them though. So make sure you sign up for the challenge. But uh, these gloves are, are pretty solid. They, they've lasted for over six months so far. And I've been using them on the bag and everything pretty consistently. The double strap gloves have been pretty solid as well. I've been using them for a little bit over a year. Um, and so, so far so good. There, there's no rips or tears or anything. Uh, I really like the quality. It took me a while to find the right uh, manufacturer to make the gloves. And now that I was able to, uh, that's where I started selling them. Cause I didn't want to sell them gloves until I, I knew that they were durable. I knew that they offered good protection, that they look sexy. And now they do all those. And so uh, also offer, if you buy any of my gloves and they like fall apart in like six months or whatever, or really early on, uh, just shoot me a message. Cause uh, I want to know. So this way I can make the gloves better. And then I'll hook you up with another pair or something like that. Um, but yeah, I'm uh, the people's champ. If your gloves suck that you buy from me and you want your money back, I'll give you your fucking money back because I don't want to give you back gloves. All right. Should I buy my new Muay Thai punching bag filled or unfilled? Um, unfilled is going to be cheaper, right, for shipping, but it'll be less convenient. I fill my bag. Uh, I bought my unfilled. And I fill it with a combination of wood pellets and mulch. And that works really well for me. They usually will pack it. I don't know what they even fill bags with or pre-fill bags with. But um, I would say unfill it. It kind of gives you that uh, added DIY, do it yourself. And just like you, you have a bond with your heavy bag because you, you filled it. You know, I don't know if that came off sexual or not. I didn't mean for it to. But once I said it, I'm like, damn, Sean, that sounds sexual. So I apologize. Anyway, sakyants, when, where, why, how? Sakyants are these things, right? So this and this are called sakyants. Sak means to tattoo, and yant is like prayer or belief in Thai. So sakyant is like a, like a spiritual tattoo, more or less. These are done by monks, uh, usually. And the, the reason that I like them very much is because they symbolize certain things that I want to embody as a person as a, and as a fighter. This uh, yacht I got in a, Bang, in a Bangkok temple called Wat Bang Pra. And if you look it up that, they do a crazy uh, like ceremony sometimes where like people like, uh, you know, like, like shake and like foam at the mouth and like have these spiritual encounters and stuff. And so I went there. You know, how the fuck not, right? And uh, I got this tattoo here, extremely painful. I was like propped up like this, and the dude's like hammering a long ass uh, like metal needle into my my chest. And holy shit, that fucking hurt. Probably hurt more than any of my other tattoos. Only took an hour and a half, but it felt like a lot longer. Um, typically, traditionally, you're supposed to let the monk choose your first tattoo and where it is on your body. I'm not a traditional guy. So I just went and did whatever the fuck I want because that's how I roll. And so I got this tattoo first. Then I had uh, an artist draw this up. And the way this was drawn up was like this right here symbolizes an arrow that was used in uh, ancient times in Thailand. And this is my right hand, right? So my arrow is usually knocking people out. And also this is uh, the, I can't show this, the symbol on the sword that they would use in battle as well. So this is essentially like my weapon arm, more or less. But I've also added this yacht, which kind of symbolizes travel and freedom and being able to go anywhere I want, wherever I want. And then this represents the five Buddhas, which is essentially like the five elements of like earth, water, fire, yada, 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 and being able to be in touch with nature and everything. So I'm a big fan of uh, tattoos, as you can see. But uh, I, I wanted to get this uh, finished uh, while I was in Thailand. I just didn't have time. But uh, eventually I will get more tattoos for sure. This is fun, guys. Thanks for all the questions. Thanks for hanging out with me. I appreciate you guys so much. It's, it's just cool to be able to uh, chill with y'all, do a little workout with y'all, do some Muay Thai, 
and have some fun answering these questions. So I uh, appreciate you guys being here. Frank Mills, any tips on shadow clinching? There's no way I can get a heavy bag and a double collar tie. Okay. So uh, let me, I guess I'll show you a little bit. Okay. So when I clinch outside, first off, there's a couple different uh, hand, hand positions that you want to kind of focus on. So you have like an over under, right? So one hand's out, one hand is in. And this arm is usually controlling like a bicep. And this arm is usually controlling the head. So you're kind of usually trying to fight for this position or a plumb position. Most beginners just try to grab your head and yank your head down. That is a good move, but it's not the only move. I rarely use that move, to be honest. I like this over under, okay? You can also do the T-Rex arms, right? Where you're grabbing like both of their biceps more or less, like the back of their triceps. So this way you can control their arms and kind of use a steering wheel, right? Or you can have a double underhook, right? Or one under and one over. There's a bunch of different hand positioning. So trying to just visualize is really important, right? And then when I'm actually shadow clinching, I'll try to like grab onto someone, right? I have his head right here. I have his arm right here. It takes a lot of visualization. So I'm going to pull his head, knee, right? And then maybe pull his arm, knee. Then maybe pull this, pull his head into this elbow or push this arm down and land an elbow, right? Or maybe I'll knee guard a little bit, then try to throw a knee in the middle. I'll move again, knee, right? I'll Sometimes I'll be on the outside, so I'll try to march forward, grab a hold of someone, knee. Maybe I'll march forward, elbow, then I'll clinch, then I'll pull, then I knee, then I pull the other way, then I knee, then I pull, knee, knee, pull knee. I don't know if that was uh, practical advice or not, but hopefully I gave you some uh, visual to work with. What do you think of combat sports combined with weight training? I think McDonald's apple pie. I think it is a good idea. In the beginning, I think it's important to have a foundation of mobility and just like strength, not so much like explosive strength, but just being able to be athletic, right? And so early on in your career, whether it's training or weightlifting, it's important to just get the fundamentals down just with any fucking thing I'm learning as I'm getting older, the fundamentals and the basics are like what <laughs> talk about 80, 20 principle, right? That's going to be the 20% that is the 80% results. So really just get good at like squat, bench press and deadlift. Those are the three main compound movements that you can get, uh, build a really good base foundation with. Then once you get a good ba base foundation, first off, before I even go any further, make sure that you're mobile, right? Make sure that you have good movement with your shoulders, with your hips, with your legs, because if you're just lifting heavier weights and getting stiffer and stiffer, man, it's going to be hard to uh, move around fluidly and be as uh, creative with your striking. So uh, make sure while you're doing strength and conditioning or weight training, I should say, you're also doing some type of mobility work. But uh, I always recommend checking out heattrick.com. He has a lot of, uh, he, he's a little bit more in depth in regards to that's his niche. It's like weightlifting or it's like strength and conditioning in Muay Thai. I do a little bit of everything. And I love strength and conditioning, but if you want some like in detail shit, I'm always passing people over to heatrick.com. He's the man when it comes to that. But uh, I will eventually come out with a weightlifting program. If that's something that you'd be interested in, let me know. I'll definitely uh, create one because I, I love it. I love this shit, man. And I want to help you guys get to the next level. I want you to feel confident in what you're doing. And uh, I want to make sure that I create like the best products that I can. So this way you, you guys are actually improving. So if you want a weight training course or strength and conditioning course, uh, let me know in the comments, drop an emoji of like a muscle or something. So this way I know, and uh, I'll see what I can do later this year. Okay. Your fighter story episode comes out money. Rob, my man, I was on Rob's uh, podcast yesterday and I was talking a lot about, uh, I enjoyed doing your podcast, Rob, because Rob didn't just ask me about Muay Thai. Obviously, we, we start with that because that's kind of like my origin story, more or less. That's where you all know me from. But we uh, discussed a lot more about life and just the ups and downs that comes with it all. And so definitely check out A Fighter Story on, uh, what is it, probably on iTunes and everything, right? 
and you can just probably Google it and find it. And I'll definitely be uh, sharing that uh, to my email list. So make sure that you're signed up for emails. Go to heavybagblueprint.com slash challenge. Sign up for email. So this way you can uh, figure out uh, how to listen to my interview with Rob. Good shout out, Scott. Way to throw that up there. Um, so side note, we're not doing abs. <laughs> Side note, we're not doing abs. That's the workout for today. So if you want to finish the workout with some abs and everything, by all means, fucking crush it. Do your thing. I'm sore today. I'm listening to my body today. So this way, tomorrow is a conditioning day. We're going to do heavy back conditioning. I want to be rested and ready to go tomorrow. So if you want to do abs, by all means, do that. You can cool down and stretch. I'm just going to finish answering questions. I'm also going to give away one free shirt. or I'm going to give a pair of shorts away today. Okay? And uh, we'll take it from there. Mozart, I'm Southpaw, but Southpaw, but can't make middle left kick. Please teach me from Japan, but can't make left middle kick. Do you mean like you can't land it or you can't throw it? Um, regardless, I'm going to give you advice that I give everyone. You just got to keep doing it. You just got to fucking keep doing it until you figure it out. But if you want to land it, if you really have trouble landing your left body kick, throw your cross behind it. If you're, you're Southpaw, right? So throw your left cross. And then your left kick behind it is going to distract your opponent from the kick. It's going to make them defend. And ideally, their, their arms are up so that left body kick can land. Okay? Throw the cross. Throw a jab cross. Throw something before you throw that left kick. And that will definitely help. If you want uh, to figure out how to do your left kick better, just stand in front of the bag and kick the bag 100 times every day with your left kick until you figure that shit out. That's uh, the whole Bruce Lee quote, right? And it's the whole 10,000 hour thing. It's just uh, keep showing up, keep putting in the work. There's no secret sauce, baby. No secret sauce. But that was a good question. Janitor Jangler, any tips on fighting a left handed guy? I have a left hand guard on fighting left handed. I have a left hand guard and don't know how to body kick so a sparring partner's leg is close to me and it's hard to kick body. Janitor, do you mean you are the left-handed guy or your opponent is the left-handed guy? Let, uh, let me know because uh, do, do I have Muay Thai guy wraps for sale? Yes. The opponent is the left-handed guy. Okay. So if your opponent's left-handed right, and you're right-handed, when you're fighting orthodox versus southpaw, right? The main idea is your rear strikes are what you're trying to land most more often than not. The southpaw is trying to land his left body kick, his left cross, his left knee. You're trying to land your right cross, your left body kick, and your or your cross, your right body kick, and your right knee. So what I like to do is I like to if I'm righty fighting a southpaw, I will circle to my left. I will use my jab and my lead teep to kind of gauge distance and disrupt their rhythm, and then I'll use my right body kick and my right cross. Uh, whether I throw a jab cross right body kick or cross right body kick, um, I'll be doing that a lot. But I'll also be attacking the inside leg because that is really uh, sensitive. I finished a fight uh, attacking an inside leg before, and so uh, definitely would recommend that as well. But fakes, circling to your left, throwing your uh, rear strikes, that is uh, my recommendation. Sean, do you have Muay Thai guy wraps for sale? Yes, I have Knock More Nation wraps for sale. Go check out the store, knockmorenation.com slash shop. Um, yeah, and grab yourself a pair, man. Maybe I'll wear some tomorrow so you can see how sexy they are. All right? I know I make everything look good, though. You ain't got to lie. It's okay. Would you wear shin guards on heavy back, Sean? If my shin was fucked up, I would. If I had like a cut on my shin or my shin was really beat up and bruised and it needed to recover a little bit, then uh, yeah, I would wear a shin guard on that shin. Um, but more often than not, I wouldn't because I want to condition my shins. But if my shins are really beat up and everything and I still want to kick the bag, then uh, yeah, I would do that. But that being said, if your shin is really hurting, you can focus on your boxing, you can focus on your clinching, you can focus on your elbows, your knees, your other kick. And so uh, kind of up to you. But um, that's my personal preference and my answer. Are your glove giveaways going to be live watchers only? 
you know what I'll do? I'll do uh, one live giveaway and one re like uh, giveaway later. So this way you don't have to show up live. Although I would definitely recommend that because then you have a chance to win two. It's going to be trivia for them. I haven't figured that shit out, man. I think it's just going to be random. I'm going to uh, make a post inside the, the challenge Facebook group where I'm going to ask a question. And then depending on the answers, whoever gets like the most likes or reactions will win. I haven't figured it out completely yet, but uh, we will see. I'll, I'll let you keep uh, thinking about it. Keep you, uh, keep you guessing. I'm fucking guessing. <laughs> Any Muay Thai books you recommend? So many. Not Muay Thai specific. Funny you should ask this though because uh, I actually wrote a Muay Thai book. And I haven't released it yet. It's still in the editing process. It's short and sweet to the point. It's going to be called Muay Thai Secrets. I'm going to release it uh, for free. All you got to do is pay shipping if you're signed up for my list at least. And like getting my newsletters and my emails. You uh, guys will get it for free. You just got to pay shipping. And uh, it's pretty much just a crash course in everything I've learned throughout my Muay Thai journey. It's a little over 100 pages. I try not to fluff it up. And just like make it like 300 pages just to make it look cool no it's like a hundred something pages and it gets to the point with the the best tips that i could give you with your muay thai so keep an eye out for that but other than that i love the the fighter's heart by sam sheridan and the fighter's mind by sam sheridan had a lot of impact on my life and my my fight career um this is not a muay thai book but george st pierre's book was pretty good i enjoyed that as well um there's a lot of uh, books that aren't Muay Thai, but they're like martial arts and like philosophy related that I enjoyed. The Art of War. Um, I can't, I can't, I have a whole bookshelf over there. You know what? Want to come see what's on my bookshelf? Let's fucking do it. Go for a ride. You're going to get a little tour of my, my house. Let's go. All right. We're in the living room right now. All right, this is my big ass TV, and then these are my books. So over here, these are kind of like bit books. I have this whole Greek mythology book that I'm really excited to get into. Uh, Mastery by Robert Greene is a great book. I'm a big fan of Robert Greene and the way he writes, and he has anecdotes of like uh, historical figures and historical events from the past. Definitely a big book that a uh, big fan of Robert Greene. Also wrote the Thirty Three Strategies of War, which is a really good book. I didn't get to finish it, but uh, it was uh, really really happy about that. Outwitting the Devil is one of my favorite books of all time. Definitely recommend reading that. It's an easy read. It's a quick read. Uh, Napoleon Hill, who you're probably familiar with, uh, Thinking Grow Rich. He wrote this book. It's a lesser known one of his books, but big fan. Then I have these Muay Thai books. I literally have textbook of Pahu, Pahu Youth Muay Thai. I have not read that. Tao of Jeet Kune Do, I've scattered through that. Uh, the Fighter's Heart, Fight Club is always a good one. The Daily Stoic. Yeah, so, so those are some books. This has some books as well. Oh, here, here's The Fighter's Heart, The Fighter's Mind. And she has all her, uh, her hippie books. Her hippie yoga books. <laughs> I love her hippie yoga books, though. I've read some of them as well. Because I'm kind of a hippie. I don't know if you knew that. Anyway, hope that answers your question. Good question. Sway, Tilly. Sway, Tilly. Sway. My dogs don't fucking listen, man. Any other questions? How we doing here? How long should I train before competing? Um, I got this question yesterday and this is a good question because a lot of people aren't sure. And I get that because everyone's situation is very different than everyone else's. Typically, if I were to give you a quick answer, one year, you should be training consistently for one year at least, but maybe earlier, if you feel like you want to be prepared for a little bit longer, I mean, you could always prepare more, you know? Some people get into the state of mind where they just never feel ready. And let me tell you a little secret. 
I almost never felt ready for like any of my fights, but you fucking do it and you, you show up and you, you face your fears and you fucking do it. But ultimately, how long should I train before competing? I would say at least a year, but it kind of is up to your, your trainer and your instructor as well. If you have a good trainer instructor, they'll know if you're ready to fight or not. Uh, if you're not lucky enough to have one of those, then uh, you kind of have to just base it off your own experience. But uh, I would say video yourself. Make sure you're sparring a lot. Uh, that, that responsive flow of info and reactions right away. So this way you actually know what a fight is like and everything. Um, I think Scott just left left the, the thing. Scott, where'd you go, my man? Oh, you didn't? He said host just left the broadcast. So I got scared. I don't know what to do without Scott. Scott essentially runs my business, people, just so you know. I'm just the pretty face that you see. And Scott does all the shit in the background. What's your opinion on magnesium float tanks for recovery? I think they're cool. I've done them a couple times. Um, I like them because I'm, I'm a big, uh, I'm an introspective type of person. I like to sit and relax and just think deeply on things. I like to meditate and be in silence. And so that was like complete silence. And then you're floating. And so uh, I definitely felt like it aided in my recovery. It helps with my uh, mental focus and my uh, attention span because you have, you have to lay there for at least like an hour, right? And so you're just laying, floating for an hour. It's a, it's a cool, little, cool little book. Or a book. I don't know why I said book because I read a comment on the side. Who's your personal favorite MMA fighter of all time? I don't, I don't really have like favorites, but... I love Jose Aldo, man. He is just a fucking G. He, uh, he's a true fighter. You know, he's a true champion. He's a true legend. He ain't no bullshit. He just is what he is, and I fucking love that for him. I also love Edson Barbosa's style of fighting. He hasn't been on like the best streak, but I love his low kicks, his switch kicks, his striking. Big fan of that. Um, I did like TJ. I like. I still like TJ Dillashaw fucked up that he cheated and everything i liked his style of fighting is uh dwayne ben ludwig uh switching stances cutting angles and that kind of stuff i was a big fan of uh that fighting style and i also met tj in person and a lot of team alpha male when i trained uh out in colorado with dwayne ludwig and them and uh he was a real cool guy i love juliana pena as well the fact that she just beat Ju uh amanda nunez is super cool i got to meet juliana she was cool uh, super down to earth and everything as well but um yeah, those would probably be some of, some of the guys that I like the most. I love Israel Adesanya as well, just his style. I love his swag and everything too, and he doesn't give a fuck, and I just appreciate that. Uh, and I also appreciate that about Conor McGregor. I definitely don't agree with a lot of what he fucking says and does, and there's moments that I'm like, oh, I like Conor McGregor, and then there's other times where I'm like, that dude is a fucking prick, and I would never want to be a fan of his. But I do appreciate – uh, what he's done for fighters pay and being able to get more eyes on people. So I, I don't, I want to say I have one specific MMA fighter, just like I don't have one specific Muay Thai fighter, but, uh, those were a few. When it comes to calf kicks, do you throw a lot or find that they're useful in Muay Thai style combat? I don't throw a lot. They are easier to check. They are much easier to check. The reason why they tend to work a little bit better in MMA is because uh, they're a little bit more flat-footed and they don't check kicks as much. Um, you get your kick checked a couple times because all you got to do to check a calf kick, if I'm fighting and you're trying to kick my calf, I just got to turn out like this, right? And usually I'm fighting like this with more weight on my back foot. So if I want to block a calf kick, I literally just got to do this. Boom, boom, right? So... I don't, sometimes I'll throw them because there's times in a fight where someone will check my kick and I'll just be like, fuck you. And I'll throw a kick again at the same exact spot and I'll keep checking it. But I'll just kind of like want to show him like and get a mental edge. It's like, I don't fucking care if you check a kick. I'm going to kick your ass anyway. And uh, so, yeah, that's what's up. Can you demonstrate your high kick? I feel like the angle on mine would hit the shoulder or something on the way up. Yeah, sometimes it could glide off the shoulder and then come kick the head. Let me show you. Uh, let me show you what's up, Facebook user. Uh, I'm kind of like cold now, though. Uh, 
All right, when I throw any kick, so remember what I was saying before about like getting power in your kicks? Speed is and uh, accuracy is important. So when I throw a roundhouse kick, I don't want to make it too round. If it's too round, it's easier to defend and easier to see. So when I throw a kick, I don't want it to come all the way around like that, right? I want my knee to come almost straight up and then to turn over with the kick. So when I throw the kick, all right, let me show you the difference. Again, if I throw the a wide roundhouse, boom, right? As opposed to a short roundhouse, all right? It's a lot quicker, it's a lot less telegraphed, and I, can, I feel like I can generate even more power with that. When it comes with the high kick, all right, the rounder I throw the high kick, the less likely it's gonna hit their shoulder. Sometimes I can throw the kick and then come straight up and kind of like follow their body, and then once it gets to the shoulder, kind of turn it over. So as I throw the kick, I'm kind of just bringing this up. Then at the last second, I'll turn over. I can't do it slow. I have to go, boom, right? If I do it sideways, okay. But essentially, you can throw your high kick a little bit more round because then this way, you can kind of come up and then down onto their neck or their face or their chin or their nose or their eyeballs and uh, knock their asses out. But uh I don't throw a lot of high kicks. I have one high kick knockout that will live in infamy. But uh, honestly, man, I just punch people in the face and kick them in the legs, and that's worked really well. And it's a lot easier than throwing high kicks. <laughs> have you done any knock, uh, Moy Baran training in Thailand? No, I haven't. I would love to do that. There's actually a crew down in North Carolina who I see on uh, Instagram and stuff. And she looks like she's legit. And so uh, I would love to travel down there and uh, do some proper Moy Baran. So uh, one day, one day. How long do you do a leg? How long do you do a leg sweep? How, how do you do a leg sweep? It is hard to show without a uh, partner. I'm not sure what you mean by leg sweep because there's a bunch of different leg sweeps because you can catch a kick and then sweep you can catch a kick and sweep this way you can be clinching and sweep you can uh catch a teep and sweep i will need a partner to demonstrate with and my wife's pregnant so i'm not going to be sweeping her or anything right now so i'll have to get back to you on that alex good question though <sighs> Fracture my leg while kicking a couple months back. How do I get back to training, sir? My ankles are still stiff. One day at a time, my man. Just one day at a time. You just show up, even if it's five, ten minutes, go to the gym, go to training, show up to the heavy bag, work on your boxing, start loosening up that ankle, man. Work on some mobility, do some yoga. Just start taking it one day at a time. You don't need this big, massive plan of how you're going to recover, when you want to fight again, when you want to spar again. Just show up. Just have some fun. Enjoy training. And uh, just start getting back into a, a flow of it, right? So how do I get back into training? Yeah, one minute at a time, one day at a time, man. That's how you do it. Plus, I'm doing road work on combat boots. It's fucking crazy. I want to do it. That's not, I mean, like, road work alone is not the best on the knees. Add boots to it, and uh, boots aren't made for running. And so uh, I would not recommend it. What is your fight record? I am 25 and 10. 25 and 10, I was 7-4 as a pro. And whatever the difference is as an amateur. I uh, Here's a little motivation for you. I started my pro career 0-3. I lost my first pro fight in the first round, TKO, uh, in front of my family and friends in New York City. And man, that was a ego hit. Really made me doubt everything I was fucking doing. Then I lost again on Lion Fight on TV. It was a better fight, but I still lost. I still didn't feel like I did well. And then I fought again in Thailand in a four-man tournament on my birthday and lost that shit. So, like, with that fight, what drives me crazy is that you, you just pick a ball, and it's like a either red or blue ball, and uh, blue balls. And uh, from there, your opponent, the other three people in the tournament pick them. I was like, anyone but the tie, anyone but the tie. And I fucking draw the tie. So I had to fight the tie in the first round, and he just beat me. 
So I lost three in a row. I, uh, the third one was on my birthday. Man, again, I was just down everything I was doing. How could I be the Muay Thai guy and lose my first three pro fights, right? Fortunately, I have a really good, amazing wife and support system who helped me uh, kind of pick myself up, start feeling bad for myself and, and get back into it. And then I won, uh, won five fights in a row after that. And then I lost one. And then I won. I don't remember how it goes, but something like that. Anyway, just know that if you lose your first fight, you lose your first couple of fights, you have any setbacks in anything, I've been there. I'm not an undefeated, like, big, popular Muay Thai MMA fighter, but uh, I very much enjoyed my career. I very much learned from it, enjoyed it, and I just had a lot of fun. And so uh, just know that winning isn't everything. Yeah, it's important. You obviously don't want to lose a fight, but um, – the losses are where I definitely learn a lot more because it, uh, it humbles you fucking quickly. When you win, you're like, oh, yeah, I'm the shit. And, yeah, you might pick up a couple things here or there that you feel like you could do better. But when you're losing, uh, and when you're losing fights that, like, it's obvious that the other guy was better than you, it really makes you question yourself. But questioning yourself is where you learn the most about yourself as long as you're able to answer those questions honestly. So... There's some philosophy from Muay Thai guy today. Last question. How long is your daily training? How much do you pay attention to your weight? I don't pay attention to my weight at all. I am lucky in the fact that I have a fucking sick metabolism. And I work out every day. And I eat pretty well. So uh, weight is not like a, a thing for me. I am very fortunate. And uh, I will say that. I know uh, some members of my family struggle with weight and everything and it, it can be difficult, but I want to focus too much on weight, man. Like even if I was overweight and wanted to shed some pounds, the, the weight and the scale is such a liar, it's such a fucking liar. And it just messes with you, man. Uh, unless you're cutting weight for a fight, like obviously you need to know, but like just start by showing up and treating yourself right. And just doing a little bit every day, even if it's 10 minutes a day, right? How long do I do daily training? It totally depends on the season of my life. So I, I, I'm a big uh, believer in your life goes in seasons. So sometimes I'll be training. Like when I was fighting, I was training like five hours a day, maybe six hours a day. Uh, now that I'm not fighting and I'm uh, more comfortable at home, I'm focusing on different things besides uh, fighting. I probably train like 30 to 60 minutes a day. Every other day, sometimes I'll go for a run. Sometimes I'll lift weights. Sometimes I'll do yoga. Sometimes I'll go for walks. Sometimes I'll hit the bag. Sometimes I'll do shadow boxing. Sometimes I'll go to the gym and spar. But um, I just kind of go with the flow, man. Um, it's good to have goals. It's good to set, like, say you're 200 pounds. You want to get down to 180. That is good goal. Don't fucking weigh yourself, though, for, like, a month at a time because – you might go up, you might go down, you might fluctuate, and then you start playing mind tricks with yourself and all goes to shit. Focus on feeling good and showing up for yourself. That is the best advice I can give you. We got any other questions, Scott? I think that's it. Okay, great. So let's give away something, huh? You guys stuck around with me to the end. How many people we got watching, Scott? Let me know. Um, 60 people. All right. Good to go. So there's less people here today, so that gives you a better chance of winning something. If you've already won something, please let someone else win today. We are doing a shorts giveaway. We will give away these specific pair of Muay Thai guy shorts. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. All right. These are good. I haven't worn these too much, but I really like them. Because I have, I literally have like 50 pairs of fucking Muay Thai shorts. Anyway, give away a free pair of shorts. You guys ready? Drop an emoji if you're ready, if you're paying attention, if you're listening. Otherwise, I ain't going to give shit. All right? Okay. We got a little bit of emojis going on. Yeah. Jim Lake, you mean yours are, like, wait, like the pair you are wearing? Yeah, I'll give you, you can get any Knockboy Nation pair. I like the ones that I'm wearing, personally. 
But uh, fuck it, you can take whatever pair you want. Live your life. Do what you want. All right, we got enough people listening. We got some hang tens, bro. Got some muscles. Got some good vibes. All right. Trivia question. Let's fucking go. What year did Muay Thai officially come to the USA? Officially. What year did Muay Thai officially come to the USA? I didn't know this until I looked this shit up. Until Scott looked this up. And you're probably all, <laughs> Google, Google, tell me. Siri, tell me. Alexa. Oh, a used pair that you that I worked out in. I do have a bunch of my old fight shorts. Beverly, 1975. I don't believe that's correct. No, it's not. Sorry. Sorry. 1983. No, it's not correct. 1968. Yes, that is correct. But Deb, you're a one. We got to give someone else a chance. Who's the next answer? Jim, my man. You win a new pair of Not More Nation shorts. Congratulations. Deb, you are a killer at trivia. Uh, sorry that I don't want you to win all the prizes and just take everything from my store, but uh, I got to spread the love. I got to spread the love. All right. So, Jim, you win, my man. I will shoot you a message uh, later today. Usually after these workouts, I have to upload them. I have to do shit, be an adult, eat food, but uh, I'll eventually get you the discount code so you can use it. Okay. Um, Cool, guys. You guys have fun? I hope so. Anyway, I had a, a good workout. Today was a little bit lighter, a little bit shorter, but uh, I enjoyed it. I kind of needed a little bit more of a, a tame workout today. So hopefully this was good for you. You push yourself as hard as you needed to, and I hope you've been enjoying this workout. So make sure you sign up for the challenge if you haven't yet, bitch. So go do that. And uh, yeah, let me know what you think. I always appreciate any constructive criticism. If there's anything I could add or change from these uh streams from these challenges from these workouts let me know i am open to feedback i won't berate you don't worry uh and yeah we'll just take it from there but uh enjoy the rest of your day i'll be here 11 a.m eastern tomorrow we're going to be focusing on conditioning so get a good night's sleep yo because uh we're going at it tomorrow okay